Hi, I'm Mel, and in this lecture, we're going to talk about the reasons why you should recycle aluminum cans. So, we've been talking about electricity, and it's related to that, but let's start out with talking about one of the reasons why we do not recycle aluminum. So, aluminum is not a rare element. That's some, the first thing we need to establish. If I look at all of the, uh, the common elements that's in the crust of the Earth, number one is oxygen, number two is silicon, Number three is aluminum. Okay, 7.5% of everything in the crust is aluminum. Now, it's not pure aluminum metal. It's aluminum mixed in with other elements to form minerals. Point being, we don't recycle aluminum because aluminum itself is rare. There's, other reason, there's another reason why. So let's talk about how we actually get aluminum metal. And so what we're working up towards is the steps to get from uh, this material, which is called bauxite, and it's these red blobs uh, that have uh, aluminum-bearing minerals in there. We're going to work towards the step from this rock to, say, an aluminum can, like what is required. Okay, so bauxite is a mixture of these red blobs, and from a distance, bauxite often has this reddish appearance. And bauxite forms wherever you had a lot of precipitation for a long period of time. So what happens is all of the rain, so think of like a rainforest where it rains almost every day, it leaches the soil away, and the only components that are left over are these aluminum-bearing compounds called bauxite. So what we're looking at here is a remnant of an ancient soil that is left over from an, an era where there's a lot of precipitation. So you might have an area that's tropical today, and there's lots of rain, and that's leaving behind the bauxite, or you might find a remnant of an ancient bauxite soil from the geologic past. Either way, uh, this red material that's left behind after all of that precipitation contains a lot of this mineral bauxite. So, the first thing they gotta do is just simply dig it up. And so that's what they're doing here. You see all this red bauxite in the foreground here. And uh, bauxite mines are very uh, red, like everything's red because this bauxite mineral itself is red. So here's one from the from the air. You can see the roads are red, the mine mining areas are red. Um, here the buildings are red. Everything in this in this photo is kind of a reddish tint. This is all bauxite that's being mined. Now you can kind of see uh, the wh where there's runoff from a bauxite mine because it 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 will also be red. So this was a river, and it's filled with this uh, reddish uh, muck here uh, that's uh, bauxite runoff. Here's a, here's a place where uh, there, there was an overflow of a river, and you can see this reddish material that went through here. That's, again, from a bauxite mine. There are some places in the world where bauxite is being mined. It gets into the water, so you see this reddish uh, in this waterway here. That's from a nearby bauxite mine. Uh, in this town here, you can see all the red. So this is a road that uh, leads to a bauxite mine. So there's trucks that go by here every day, and some of that material falls off, and you can see all that reddish uh, stuff. So bauxite, um, you know, the, the mining process itself is you just it's pretty simple. You, you dig it out of the ground, but of course a lot of it somehow uh, runs off into the environment. So they crush the bauxite into sand sized pieces and then they usually haul it on a, a barge. So they're filling up these ships here. And here they, here's some barges with uh, bauxite sitting in, in the bay there. Um, here you can see the little piles of red bauxite. Here's a big ship that's full of bauxite inside. And they haul it off to a smelter. Okay, so here's a smelter and it's built near uh, near a waterway, like a bay or something, because they're expecting these shipments of bauxite. A smelter is a plant that is going to take that red bauxite material and split it apart so that we have aluminum metal. Okay, so we're going to go from, from bauxite grains to pure metal. That's what a smelter does. And we're going to talk about the, the stages here. Um, so here's a smelter right there. And here's what they're doing in there. So the problem is bauxite itself is a mixture of things, and they want to purify it to this pure, um, to a 
compound, Al203. So there's other stuff mixed in there and they want to get rid of it. They want pure Al203. So what they do is they take the bauxite, and remember it's been crushed up now, and they subject it to heat and pressure and water and sodium hydroxide, which is kind of like Drano, so it's a strong base, and they cook it. And what happens is all the stuff that's not Al203 gets dissolved away. And here's an image of a smelter, and you can see all these uh, smokestacks, which tells you that there's probably some air pollution being produced here. And this process is one of the things that, that produces some of the pollution in this process. But at the end of all that, you have Al203, which we also call alumina. Okay, Now, after that chemical separation, um, we have a, the biggest problem of all, which is that what we want is pure aluminum, Al. We don't want the oxygen in there. But we don't have that. We have Al203. And it turns out that the bond between the oxygen and the aluminum is very strong. So from chemistry, if we draw out what Al203 looks like, here's our aluminum. We've got these double bonds here on the oxygen, and we have to break those bonds. And it turns out it's very difficult to do. So the way that it's done is they mix in this chemical cryolite, which is sodium aluminum fluoride, which is itself a pretty nasty chemical, and they mix it in with this Al203, and they put it in this big vat, and then they run a very uh, strong electrical current through it. And what will happen is, as the current runs through this mixture, the pure aluminum, it, essentially it breaks the, those bonds, those double oxygen bonds, and it the pure aluminum metal sinks to the bottom as a liquid and then they come and they extract that liquid from the bottom of the vat. So this is what it looks like. So you can see this glowing reddish color here. Um, these are the electrodes. So the vat is below the ground. Electricity, the current is coming down through these electrodes going down into uh, below the ground here. and they're running hundreds of thousands of amps through this mixture and what floats to, again, sinks to the bottom is the aluminum metal and this thing is like a vacuum cleaner and it's sucking up the aluminum metal off the bottom. That's what they're doing. And so what they'll do is they'll just go down the line here. You can see these things all the way down to the end of this building. They're all doing this. This takes a lot of electricity. So each one of these vats that you see here uh, has a set of electrodes, each of which is going through thousands of amps. So from what we talked about before, it's going through uh, each one of the each one of these is, is hundreds of thousands of watts. So this is another picture of what that looks like. So here's their aluminum sucker upper, and here's all the the vats. So it requires so much electricity to do this that often in the in the entrance of, a, of an aluminum uh, smelter, you'll, you'll see this huge uh, network of incoming power lines. And sometimes they need so much electricity that they actually have their own power plant. So here is a smelter. That's These elongate buildings in the background. That's the smelter. And then this is a cold fire power plant. You can see there's the coal piled up right there. So this, this aluminum smelter needs so much electricity that they actually have their own coal fire power plant. Here's one in eastern Washington that has its own dam. So there's the smelter. You can see the elongate buildings. There's the hydroelectric dam. So, so water is going through a turbine, which turns uh, magnets, which generates electricity. And so that's how they get enough power to uh, run the smelter. So if we add up the electricity that it would take to develop a brand new aluminum can from that bauxite mineral, it turns out it takes about 350 watt hours of energy to make one aluminum can from scratch. If you instead recycle a can, all they have to do is melt it down. They don't have to split the aluminum oxygen bonds and it takes about 5% of that. So we can do some math with this. So if it takes 350 watt hours to make one aluminum can, we could ask questions like this. So how much coal uh, would you need to make 12 cans. All right, so we have a 12 pack of, of aluminum cans or soda cans, whatever, and we want to know well, how much coal did we have to burn to do that? So from last time, these are the, 
We're going to use the same numbers as last time. You get your power in kilowatt hours, then from kilowatt hours, you multiply that by 2.2 for the pounds of coal, or times 1,000 for the liters of CO2, et cetera, all the things that we did before. So my energy is 350 watt hours times, I got 12 of them. So I just take 350 times 12, I get 4,200 watt hours. And to convert that to kilowatt hours, I divide by 1,000, and I get 4.2 kWh. Okay, so that's how much energy it takes to make a 12-pack. How much coal is that? So let's say I ask for coal in pounds. Then all I have to do is take this 4.2 and multiply 2.2 pounds per kilowatt hour. And 4.2 times 2.2 is 9.24. Okay, so it took us 9.24 pounds of coal to make a 12 pack of cans. How much CO2 is that? So I go back to my kilowatt hours and multiply by 1,000 and I get 4.2 kilowatt hours times 1,000 liters per every kilowatt hour gives me 4,200 liters of CO2. Okay, so that's what's required to make our cans, 12-pack of cans. So if I throw them away, then I've got to expend this much, you know, burn this much coal and produce this much CO2 to make another 12. But if I recycle them, they can just melt them down and make new ones, and it only takes about 5% of that. There's another set of problems we can do. We could say something like this. Let's, let's imagine that I have, I've got a computer, a little laptop, that uses 14 watts. Okay, so imagine pretty, you know, fairly modern, small laptop. And I want to know, if I took those 12 cans and I just threw them away instead of recycling them, I'm essentially throwing away energy, right? I'm throwing away the electricity that it would take because i got to make 12 new cans. How long could I run a computer with that electricity that I just threw away by tossing those cans, right? So how long could I run a computer... on the electricity it takes to make 12 new cans. Okay, so again the idea is if I throw a can, a little can away, I must not recycle it, I gotta expend a bunch of energy to make a new one. So if I had a 14 watt computer how long could I use that computer? How long could I run it on 12 cans worth of energy? So the formula I'm going to use to figure this out is the same one we've done before. Energy is power times time. Okay, so what's my energy? My energy is how much energy it took to make 12 cans. We just solved that. We said it was 4.2 kilowatt hours. And the power is 14 watts times time. We don't know what time is. That's what we're solving for. So this is an algebra problem where we're just going to divide both sides and isolate time. But there's one step we have to do, and that is this. We, we did a conversion to get watt hours to kilowatt hours. So what we have to do is get rid of that K before we can do the math, because we got watt hour, we got watts over here. We're going to have times um, in hours as an answer. We got to get rid of this K. So I'm going to go back to what we had before. 
this 4200 right here, and I'm going to put that in. I'm just getting, I'm just going backwards, getting rid of instead of dividing by a thousand, multiplying a thousand to get rid of the k. Just I'm going to write this out: watt hours equals 14 watts times time. Okay, so now I'm going to divide both sides by 14 watts. So I take 4200, divide by 14, and I get 300 hours. So, so that means I could turn that computer on and leave it on continuously for 300 hours on the electricity it would take to make 12 new cans. So we could even, let's divide that by 24, and that's 12 and a half days. So the point being that when we don't recycle an aluminum can, we're essentially throwing away electricity that could be used for something else. Okay, so to recap the process, if you mine about four tons of bauxite, the mineral, and then you run it through that chemical digestion process, you get about two tons of alumina, which is Al203. You don't want Al203, you want pure aluminum, and you run it through that second process, that, that's the part that takes all the electricity, and you get one ton of actual aluminum metal. So, because it takes a lot of electricity to make cans, We'd like to recycle as many as possible. And it turns out, as a country, we're really bad at doing this. So here's an old, old graph that was published in 2002. And it looks at how, how many it says thousands of tons per year of aluminum cans were thrown away in the United States. Right. So there weren't really too many aluminum cans before 1970. So the graph kind of starts at 1970. And what we see is that as time has gone on and as aluminum cans became more and more popular, we just threw more and more of them away, right? So um, they, they uh, calculated in this, in, again, this is for the year 2001, uh, so 1970 to 2001, that 16 million tons of aluminum was just simply thrown away over that time period. And if you look at a more modern records, we really have not gotten any better. So here's uh, from 96 to 2015, we're looking at uh, how, how well we have recycled aluminum. And so there's, uh, there's the, a blue line and a red line for industry and consumers. But the point is, is here's the 50% mark, right? So we are recycling a little bit better than half of the cans. And then you can see it dips back down again and then it gets better. So the red line, you can imagine, that's us as consumers. And it's hovering around the 50% mark. So in other words, we pretty much throw away about half of our aluminum cans. And when I teach this class face-to-face, -face, usually in a college classroom, I will go over to the garbage can at this point, and I'll open it, and I guarantee there are aluminum cans in the trash. And right next to the trash is usually a recycling bin. So in other words, it's not even, it doesn't even require any effort to do the recycling. People simply just don't care. Um, back to that 2002 paper, um, they, were, they were looking at, um, again, they, they're calculating how many aluminum cans were wasted from 1972, in this case, to 2000. Uh, so there's a couple interesting numbers here. One is, uh, how much electricity did we throw away? It says exactly half of all U.S. homes for one year. So in other words, we could power half of the, all the homes in the United States for a year on the electricity that we threw away, essentially, uh, from aluminum cans alone. Or you can do an equivalent. That's equivalent as 15,796 million gallons of gasoline or 342 million barrels of oil. That's how much energy equivalent that we threw away during that time period. So, a uh, couple more statistics. Every six months, we throw away enough aluminum to rebuild the world supply of commercial airplanes. So, airplanes are made of aluminum because aluminum is very light. Uh, so, every six months, we could just replace all the commercial airlines and airplanes in the world uh, based on the amount of cans that we throw away. 
Um, the electricity that we could save each year by recycling the thrown away cans would, would be enough electricity to power 3 million U.S. homes. So 3 million houses we could power each year just on the cans that we're, we're chucking. So when we make new cans, remember it takes 350 watt hours per can. Plus you've got the bauxite mining and all the runoff from that. You've got the air pollution from the chemical digestion process. Uh, all the greenhouse gases that we're making, all those things count. So why do we recycle cans? Not but because aluminum is rare, because it's not, but because it takes so much electricity to make a can. That's why.